Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting or doodling some houses bunched together in a double page spread. This is actually fairly easy to do, it just takes some patience because we will be covering a double page spread. So let's begin by sketching it out. I'm going to begin by sketching out the basic outline of the house shapes until I've covered the whole double page spread. And I also want to make sure that the distribution is fairly even. You can make the houses all face the front in a two-dimensional way, but I want to also introduce a little bit of angles for some so the composition can be a bit more flexible. The things that I like to play around with is the width and length of the houses, the angle of the roof, and if we're seeing the house from the side or the front so the roof can be horizontally placed or you can just see a triangle in the middle and the roof coming from the sides. I've also introduced some trees. I find that these are good fillers for some awkward empty spaces and it's a really easy way to fill those spaces. Regarding the trees though, it'll be weird if it's heavy on one side or specific area, so I'm going to evenly distribute them as I go. As I'm drawing the houses, I try to not pile them up right on top of each other but find a way to alternate the placement. So as an example, I try to place a house in between the tips of the triangular rooftops from the houses in front so the houses at the back have more space for the details of their exterior. I also realized that as I was drawing more of the houses at the top, my houses are getting smaller and smaller so be mindful of that as you're distributing them. In my case, it still works out because we can assume that the houses in front or at the bottom of the page is closer to our view but it's a bit odd if the ones at the top or in perspective at the back to be larger. Once I'm done with the basic distribution of the houses, this is where I can start to figure out the placement of certain details like windows or doors if you can see them. I personally like to play with the types of windows or window frames, so some can be longer, some can be a bit more square or even wider. You can also play with the size regarding the details though I'm not going to sketch out too much because I want to figure out some things as I paint later on because I find that it's easier to paint certain things freehand rather than drawing it out and then painting them on again. As I mentioned before, I feel like the houses in front are larger, so the space at the back looked like it's more densely packed. So to fix the spacing without changing the size of the houses, I decided to add some more roof attachments to some of the houses that I already drew out. So there's a bit more detail to these larger looking houses. So that's it for the sketching portion. Next, I'm going to go over the colors. I'll be using Yellow Ochre by Holbein, Queen Sienna by Daniel Smith, New Gamboche by Daniel Smith, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, Indigo by Schminke, and Terra Verde by Holbein. I'm also going to be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. Ph. Martins, and for the details I'm going to be using some colored pencils. This is just a really cheap hobby grade watercolor colored pencils by Faber-Castell. They don't have names for the colors, instead they have numbers, so if you guys have the same one and you would like to use the exact same colors, here are the numbers. Okay, so let's begin to paint. I'm going to start out by painting the trees since they're going to be overlapping in front of the houses and it's much easier to paint them first. So as we're painting the house later on, we can paint around the trees that we've already painted. For the color of the trees, I'm using a mix of New Gamboge and Terra Verde to create a light yellow-green color which I like to place for the top parts of the trees and for the darker green, I'm using a mix of Terra Verde with a little bit of Indigo. I generally want to use lighter values for the top part because the sun is coming from the top and there's more shadows at the bottom. I'm doing this a section at a time, not really waiting for any areas to dry first so the paints can just mingle with each other naturally. I like to make the edges nice and uneven so the edges of the trees look a bit more natural and as I go, I switch colors to a medium tone which I just used Terra Verde by itself and to darken certain areas for the bottom part of the tree I added indigo. You can see as I was using Terra Verde by itself and using a lighter consistency for that left top part of the tree, the value also becomes lighter. So there's also the option of using one color to create lighter and darker values by just playing with the consistency of those colors. 
So here's an example where I use a mix of cherry verde with a little bit of indigo and I'm not really going to use too much of the yellow green. In fact, the yellow green is a different hue altogether and though it is lighter in value, it could also work as just a different type of color of a tree with leaves which are slightly drying off. So the light value here is actually the same mixture of cherry verde with a little bit of indigo but in a really light consistency. Here's another example of the same concept. As you can see, I'm using a light consistency here for the edges of the highlights or the lighter areas of the tree. Then I use a deeper green with more indigo in the mix, but it's also in a thicker consistency for the darker areas. So I'm just going to play around with the ratio of the colors as well as the consistency of the colors to finish painting the rest of the trees. As I've mentioned multiple times in my previous videos, watercolor always dries much lighter. The colors will fade as it gets absorbed into the paper. And if you guys have been here for a while, you know that this sketchbook has damaged paper, which makes it even worse. So after certain areas have dried, you'll see that the colors have faded and I'll go back to layer on more of the darker values to keep building on the depth. So after I've painted the trees, I'm going to erase some of the messy pencil marks for the houses because I'm going to paint them next. The first color mixture that I'm going to use is yellow ochre with the tiniest bit of indigo to mute the color slightly. Then I'm also going to dot in a little bit of quinciana for the top part of the roof while the surface is still wet to create a little bit of variation. For the sixth one, I'm using the same mixture of yellow ochre with quinciana and a little bit of indigo, but this has more quinciana compared to the previous ratio. So with this color mixture and just playing around with the different ratios, I'm going to paint some of the roofs of the houses and I like to distribute the colors somewhat evenly so there's a nice spread all across the composition. At the moment, the colors that I've been using is mostly quinciana and yellow ochre in the ratio with a little bit of indigo. But for this next one, I'm adding more indigo in the ratio and mostly quinciana with less yellow ochre so I can create darker browns. The more indigo I mix, like for this next roof here, the more muted my brown will be. You can see that this has less saturation as well because I'm using a light consistency to create the lighter values. So the thicker the consistency, the darker the value, but also the more saturated the colors will be. So this is something that you guys can play around with. And just like before, you can also pair two tones. So at the bottom, you'll see my browns is a little bit more muted because it has more indigo and at the top, it has more quinciana. By the way, this is just a color palette that I've chosen for this composition. You can also use other colors as well if you would like to make this a little bit more colorful or even more minimalist. For these almost black or grey looking roofs, I use a mix of quinciana and indigo. But as you can see, the more indigo I use, the more neutral the color will be. Once I'm done painting the roofs, I'm going to start painting the exterior. I'm going to start with a light color. This is from 
a mix of buff titanium with a little bit of quince sienna to make the color a bit more creamy. The next color that I'm going to introduce for the exterior is yellow. This is from the same mixture as before, but I added a bit of new gamboge. And just like the previous color, I'm going to spread it and distribute the color of the exterior all across this composition. You can see that I'm also playing with the consistency, so this one that I'm painting has more water in the mix, so the color becomes lighter. I also want to start introducing some shadows right under the roof and under the windows. And for this darker value, I basically use a darker version of the same mix. You have the option of using the same base color but in a thicker consistency, or you can also use the same base color with the addition of indigo and quinciana playing around with the ratio depending on the tone that you're looking for. The next color that I'm introducing to the exterior is this neutral grayish color. For this, I use a thin consistency mix of buff titanium with a tiny bit of indigo. As I'm painting the taller houses, I like to use a thicker consistency for the bottom part of the house for added shadow and to just add a little bit more contrast so the bottom is slightly darker than the top part where the light is coming from and is hitting the house. After painting on the exterior wall of some of the houses, you may recognize that the saturation or the values of the roof and the exterior is a bit too similar. If that's the case, I just like to layer on more of the same color on top using a thicker consistency to create better contrast between the two. So from here on, I'm just going to continue to paint more of the exterior wall of the houses, adding shadows, and sometimes I like to also add on details, but when you're adding lines or details on top of the base color of the wall, make sure that the surface is completely dry so your paint doesn't bleed out. After I've painted most of the wall exterior, I'm going to start painting on the windows. For this, I'm just using indigo. This probably has a little bit of buff titanium in the mix as well, but I'm just using a medium to thin consistency. But you can always use a darker color if you would like to. I ended up darkening some of the windows for a little bit of variation later on. For some of the windows, as I mentioned before, I always like creating different variations. So here I use a mix of indigo and a little bit of quinciana. For the larger window, I'm going to add some curtains. So here I'm using a mix of indigo with a tiny bit of quinciana to mute it. And I just paint it in the middle, leaving the sides lighter as the curtains. For this next window, I added a little bit of new gamboge, which is why it's also slightly different in tone. I think I've painted most of the windows and the shadows here, so I'm going to start adding on textures for some of the exterior of the houses. So again, for this gray color, I use a mix of quince, sienna, and indigo, and I'm using a thin consistency to paint on lines. As for this next one, I'm using a thick consistency of new gamboge with a tiny bit of quince, sienna. I'm not going to do this to all of the houses, just some which I feel has a lot of empty space, and I'm basically using more or less similar tones to the base color, but in a thicker consistency. <laughs> 
I also want to start adding on some details for the frame of the windows by using Bleed Proof White. And at this point, since I've painted most of the base colors, I'm just going to jump from one step to another so I can distribute the amount of details as well as empty spaces fairly evenly all throughout the composition. Just like other elements, I like to vary the frame so some of them just has a middle vertical line and some also have more detailed frames like the one that I'm painting right now. I'm using Bleed Proof White to paint the frames because it is an opaque color but you can also use white gouache or a white pen to make the lines thinner and a bit more even. For some of the frames, you can also add different colors. Here, I'm using a dark brown for the top and the bottom. And this is something that you guys can play around with to customize your houses. Next, I'm going to add details and outlines using my colored pencil. So here I'm starting out by using a dark muted green to outline some of the trees. I ended up going over it with a darker brown since the color is stronger, but you can also do this with an art liner or a pen. If you use a pen, I feel like the outlines will be darker and much cleaner than this colored pencil. Personally though, I wanted to vary the colors and I also like the texture it creates from the pencil marks, which is why I decided to use this medium instead. I'm also going to use this pencil to add textures to the roof. I find that if I do this using the black pen, the color will become a little bit too strong, which is why I like using the colored pencils. You can just add lines diagonally for the roof, but for me, I like to also add some curved lines in between those diagonal lines to create a little bit of textures to the tiles. I'm also going to use this really dark brown color. It's something like sepia to line the bottom as well as the top of the roof generally to make the shapes a bit more defined. By using colored pencils, you can really play around with the color of the outline. And as an example, for this roof that I'm drawing out here, I tried introducing the blue hue. You can also introduce different hues if you would like to. Personally, I didn't end up liking the blues, which is why I switched to my browns instead. You can actually take this as far as you'd like and continue adding on more and more textures and details. This composition is basically a blank canvas for you to doodle and design the houses. You can even add things like balconies or add some flowers for decorations to the exterior walls. This is why I find this doodle so fun to make. So at this point, I'm just going to keep adding on the line details. 
This is when I start relining some of the outlines for the trees because I found that the green was a little bit too light so I ended up going back with a darker brown and I'm also going to line the details of the windows just to make them stand out a little bit more and also adding the details for the curtains and things like that. You'll notice that I tried to make some outlines thicker than others especially under the roof and this is basically to depict and help enhance the shadows. After adding on the pencil details, I actually left this out for a day and I realized that the colors faded so much more than I anticipated. This shouldn't happen to you, but as I mentioned before, my paper is quite damaged here, so it tends to suck all of the colors in. But I just want to finish the sketchbook, which is why I keep on using it. So I decided to go over certain areas again, adding on the shadows and also the details. I'm also going to darken some of the windows by just painting over it using the same color as the base, and then realigning the detail with bleed proof white again, just to create more contrast. I also added shadows on the houses behind the trees and added more shadows for some of the trees which have faded too much. Here as you can see, while I'm darkening the windows, I'm just painting over the detail of the frames that I've painted with bleed proof white. For some of the larger windows, I also like to darken a middle section, leaving out the sides with the base color to create the additional curtains. And I'm only going to do this for some of the houses. So some of the houses have darker windows than others. Then once everything is completely dry, I'm going to reline the white parts using bleed proof white and also outline the outer frames using my colored pencils. For this large house, I decided to add a brick texture just for fun and for a different texture compared to the other houses. As I mentioned before, you can take this as far as you'd like. I feel like this is fairly balanced though, so I'm going to leave it here after just layering on a bit more yellow for this house. So that's basically it for this doodle. I really enjoyed the process for this one because it's such a flexible doodle where you can keep adding on details depending on your taste. If you guys are new here and you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more content like this. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye!